the 175 master lock. I'm trying to learn to pick these and I've had not much success with the picking part. I tried making my own tools, didn't have much success with that. So I bought one of these, or actually two of these from this company for 10 bucks. I've had a little more success with that. So what I was gonna do on this video is show you how the lock is built with more detail than I have found on any of the sites I've looked at. I mean, a lot of people have kind of explained them, but I'm, Hopefully this is more detailed than maybe you've seen before. So here's the. The deal here's things to know about. As has been pointed out by many, there's a ridge right there. So when you try and slide something down the side here, you hit that ridge. Try and slide it in here. First thing you hit is that ridge. So to pick this, you got to get beyond the ridge. Well, with the lock taken apart, that looks easy. Hit the ridge, you angle it a little more. Oh, goes right down in there. Great. Now, the thing that people have said is you're looking for, you're looking for this notch when you do this picking. So you're looking for that notch. This is the notch. Now let's get in the light. See the notch is there. So if you slip this in, you're hitting the ridge, you go past it, and you could slip into the notch if you've had the notch in the right spot. You'll notice the notch is at the halfway point between numbers. So of course you don't know what you're doing when you start. So you're probably gonna be more like this. You go in, you hit the ridge, and then you hit the, the cam. That's the cam that keeps the lock from opening, keeps these fingers from going down. The fingers go down when, instead of the cam being there, there's this flat spot. The flat spot has to be up where the finger is. I don't know if you can see it, but I've rotated the flat spot so the flat spot's up underneath where this finger is. When all of these wheels have the flat spot under the finger, all of those fingers can go down. These all go down, they hit the flat spot. Now, that lets the other side of this thing go up and it unlocks the gizmos that keep these, you know, that engage here, and then it opens. So that's the ideal situation for opening this. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to find the numbers so that you can get all those flat spots lined up. No other way I've been told it needs to be done to do this is you use the pick, you slide it in, you have to get it past that ridge, and then you find that opening. I have had no luck with that so far. So I just wanted to show you how the lock is made as a first step. So that's how it's made. That's what we're looking for. That's what I've given up on temporarily. But this pick is also used for another way to open these locks. So the other way to open the lock is to simply slide it in next to the wheels, it's very supposedly easy, I guess. Slide it in next to the wheels. I'll show it on this one. You slide it in next to the wheels, it goes in, it goes under. You push down on this side. And when you do, pushing down on that side, it doesn't work so well when the lock's disassembled because the hinge points are no longer holding it together. When you push it down, it'll raise this other end up. That's the theory here. So that's the way to just go called bypassing it. So what I did, you know, I've looked at all the ways this thing lines, everything lines up here. What I've concluded is, you know, a lot of people say, well, you can go into almost any of these. But looking at them, it looks like the best place to avoid hitting something you don't want to hit. If you go on this side, when you get in here, 
you may wind up just jamming it between the cam and the finger because you got to get past the ridge and then you got to get past the cam and then on into here. If you go in between these two anywhere, it's a good chance you're going to wind up just hitting this spring. And, if, and the farther out you go on the edges, you just have a worse lever to work with. You, everything's cocked a little bit when you're way out here. So this is a bad choice. And this one over here would be a bad choice. This one's a bad choice because you, you might hit the spring. This one's an okay choice, but you might hit the cam. So after looking this over, it looked to me like the best place to go in was the second wheel on the left side. You won't hit the cam because there is no cam on that side. You'll still have the ridge that they built in here. You got to get past the ridge, but once you do, you really got pretty clear sailing and you got a nice long piece of, of uh, this hinge to work with because you're trying to get this under that and then you're going to tip it to pull this up. So what you're doing is you're sliding it in here underneath it, you get it in a ways and then you push it down and it lifts this up and it unlocks. So that's all the theory. So, here's my lock that I've been using, for example. It's locked. So, like I said, I think this is the best place to go in. So, I'm going to try and wedge it in here. I got, oh, I should point out, it seems to work best if you, you know, this is pointed in a certain way on the end. Flat, 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 but the bottom part goes up. Seems to work best if you use it in this orientation. So you slide it in, if I can get, unfortunately my hand is shadowing part of this, but you get it into that slot. You gotta get it in and you gotta get it past the ridge. So you gotta kind of wiggle it. And you gotta be aiming it down. As for a starter, it's gotta go down first. You can see sideways, it's kind of aimed down. You gotta get it past the ridge. Working in past the ridge, which I'm not having much luck with right this moment. See that angle that way is no good because you wind up on top of it. That's why it's got to be angled down. I'm going to turn the wheels just for the hell of it. Maybe that'll make my luck better. Try again, try to get past the ridge. Oh, I think I did, got past the ridge, angled down. Now you can start to level it out some as you go in farther. So theoretically, you can go way back. My experience is this is probably enough. So take a little pressure off of the mechanism by squeezing it this way and push down then release, squeeze, and pull out, and it's open. So that's the way to pick it. It just takes practice. I've gotten a lot better at it from when I first started. That's probably you know, maybe the 10th time I've been successful on this lock. So that's the picking part.